Salvation Army started in 1865 by an itinerant Methodist minister by the name of William Booth. He was the son of a nail maker in uh, Nottingham, England, and uh, had a poor background. Even in his early journals at 15 years of age, he said, God shall have all there is of William Booth. In Victorian England, it was not easy for the masses to attend church. In those days, you had to pay a pew tax. You had to be at least middle class. So William Booth found that as people came to him and found the Lord, uh, they were not accepted in the established churches. So they left the Methodist Church and began, first of all, it was called the East London Revival Society which soon turned into the Christian mission. This was 1865. And then in 1878, they were trying to come up with a better name to describe this movement. And William Booth had written on a piece of paper, we are a volunteer army. And the story goes that his son, Bramwell, who became the second general of the Salvation Army, looking over his shoulder, crossed out the word volunteer. He said to his father, I'm not a volunteer, I'm a regular. And wrote in the word salvation. So the word read, we are a salvation army. And with that, the name was changed and the nomenclature of the army changed also so that members church became soldiers of Christ. He soon found that you can't speak to someone about their soul if they're hungry, if they don't have shelter, if they need clothing, and hence uh, the Salvation Army social service uh, program that is well known throughout the world now uh, began as a means to help people and then share with them the good news of the gospel. While women weep, as they do now, I'll fight. While little children go hungry, as they do now, I'll fight. While men go to prison, in and out, in and out, I'll fight. While there is a drunkard left, while there is a, a poor lost girl upon the streets, while there remains one dark soul without the light of God, I'll fight. I'll fight to the very end. The first disaster the Salvation Army responded to in the United States was in September of 1900 in Galveston, Texas. A hurricane, which was unnamed in those days, uh, literally destroyed the city of Galveston. 5,000 people died. And the national commander at that time sent uh, Salvation Army officers from all over the country to Galveston to help to bring comfort and counseling and to help in any way they could. And through that, the national publications, national newspapers uh, published the fact that the Salvation Army was there and appealed for funds. And that was really the beginning of uh, the Salvation Army's disaster work. The first women to serve in the Army in a war was with the Salvation Army in World War I. Uh, uh, the th fourth general of the Salvation Army, General Evangeline Booth, went right into General Pershing's office and uh, firmly and persuasively convinced the general that the Salvation Army should be allowed to send officers to the front lines in World War I. And hence, the, uh, a few young women left in New York City and ended up in tents right on the front lines, just uh, yards and uh, no more than a half a mile back from the front lines. And there they ministered to the, uh, to the men fighting, uh, giving them comfort and prayer reading scripture, and most importantly of all, serving donuts. So they became known as the Donut Girls, and posters went up throughout the United States urging people to support uh, the Donut Girls. 
those who were serving on the front lines. And in a, in a real way, that transformed the Salvation Army's image and work in the United States. My parents were brought up in the Salvation Army, and my father, after the war, had uh, gotten his first big job with the Salvation Army. You'll hear stories over and over how the soldiers that were in the war over in Europe getting off the trains and they hadn't eaten or hadn't had a cup of coffee and the Salvation Army was giving it to free. I've heard that a thousand times. Well, the styles change. The uh, Army uh, volunteers and officers, soldiers and volunteers today look quite different than the donut girls of World War I. And what we serve may be a little different, but basically it comes from the same motivation, and that is for no other purpose but to be there in a time of crisis, to help people in the name of Christ, without any strings attached, uh, just simply to be there through the love of God to uh, help people in His name. On the morning of September 11th, uh, Commissioner Nolan and I and our team from Territorial Headquarters went down to review the disaster scene. When we arrived, a fireman had just come out of the pit. He looked at me and he said, Salvation Army, do you have some water? And I said, I'll get you some. And he said, get some for my buddy here. He needs it more than I do. So I ran around to our uh, canteen and got two bottles of water, ran back and just caught them in time. They were going back in without the water. As a Christian, uh, I believe that nothing happens by accident. In the quiet details of life, you can see the hand of God. That's the case for this worker who found a fused metal that was in the perfect shape of a cross. I could see in daylight in this place there was total darkness just a few moments ago. And I, lo and behold, I see four crosses depicting the outline of Calvary in this whole atrium. And Christ's cross was right there up front. And it really moved me. It was a good, eerie feeling. And like if you felt God reach into myself and comforting me from the sorrow of death that I had just experienced, and uh, it moved me to the point where I just fell to my knees and cried. So that cross is very important. It's a symbol that from these ashes will rise a stronger, a greater, uh, more spiritually sensitive nation.